Hi guys and welcome to my channel, it's Hila here, so I do United Stitch, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today's post is a browse through of the July 2020 issue of Berta Style, which I received and I loved and I traced a couple of patterns. And remember to stay tuned until the end so I can show you which dress I've already started sewing up from there. Okay, so first off, loved the cover, very bright, uh, very reminiscent of summer. And I like that it's got really good curb appeal, so to speak. Walking past this on a magazine stand, I would be interested um, in this. But this is the German version, by the way. So the covers are quite different for different geographical regions. Okay, and... Right off the bat, we've got quite a few ads. And then there is this thing where uh, Berta Style invited people that have been sewing with vintage Berta's for a really long time. They did like this kind of like my first Berta competition. And people got to send in and they were selected to be included in the magazine, which is pretty cool because then you've got people who love to sew with Berta. And you've got a vintage sewing machine. So I was like, awesome. So I think that in another, oh, I don't know, 30 years or so, that's going to be me. <laughs> and I'll be saying, this was my vintage Berta. It's kind of funny when you th look at things that way. Uh, but Berta are coming out with a range of merchandise where they're really, um, you know, zeroing in on the vintage stuff. And I got to say, I wouldn't mind this as a birthday present. Not sure I would buy it myself, but if somebody bought this for me, I'd be very happy. First sewing project is a little caddy uh, for your modern day accoutrements mm, useful but i'm not sure that it's very practical uh, personally speaking okay and then the first pattern that they presented with this really jungle tropically feel i absolutely loved apart from the fact that it's also the cover pattern and i love the multicolor stripe i like the relaxed feel of the raglan sleeve i was just like boom boom love it so far so this is a simple raglan sleeve loose fit dress, which is great if you don't want to worry about the fit. Fantastic for summer, especially on hot, humid days where everything feels, you know, where the atmosphere feels very uh, cloying. You just want something that allows a breeze through um, your skin. And this is absolutely perfect. And I would make this in a rayon, um, in an art gallery fabric rayon or something like that, because I find that that is lovely and cool. So I quite liked that number 112. And then continuing on with a tropically kind of like theme, we've got the tall pattern, which is also super easy. And you really don't get super more easier than this. And it's a very simple and straightforward um, top with a simple round neck. The only thing that makes it... Um, not a sack of potatoes, so to speak, is a drawstring around the waist. So you've got the option of um, adding some shaping onto it. And then we've got a cardigan and it's kind of like a zip up cardigan, um, long cardigan. I mean, she's wearing it as a top here. But for me personally, I would probably I would love this as a vest, as a separate that I put over like jeans and T-shirts. And I would love to have deep pockets on the side. I know it's got some ornamental pockets here, which are useless. You know, why why have ornamental pockets over there when you can have some nice, deep, useful pockets over here? Make it in a linen canvas. So I feel like this has got potential. Um, similar type um, over wrap over cardigan, uh, which is shown here. Is something that you'd wear over your swimsuit whilst you're lounging. So it's it's okay. I was just a little bit meh. Now, when it came to dress number 104, I went absolutely gaga for this. I really liked this dress. Um, not so much the skirt, because the skirt has got some weird kind of pleat going. I just I wasn't interested in that personally. But I loved the bodice. And I'll show you a closer detail on the line drawing of what attracted me, because it's another picture um, going uh, forward. We've got some cigarette pants that have got a curved hem. Uh, nothing too special about those. And then a cropped jacket. Really cute and wonderful for summer. And I quite like how it is fitting in with the aesthetic of the background. So you've got the mosaic tiles and you've got this fabric here. And it looks like they've used some sort of a trim um, on the edges. And this has actually got some functional pockets over here. Um, although most likely if I'm dressed in a way that I'm wearing a cropped jacket like this, I would probably have a handbag with me. 
And then we've got um, this dress, jersey dress number 107, which really caught my eye in the preview. Initially, when I saw this, I was just like, oh, my days, I would love this. But then I saw the line drawing and I was really worried about that gathering that they have um, over the front of the pelvic bone. Because I just thought, how on earth is the waist going to handle all of that gathering? And um, the long and short of it is it doesn't handle it really well. And you'll see that in a, coming, a picture that actually shows you what happens to the waist. So that was my initial uh, thought when I saw this, that you would have to do some serious reinforcement on this waistline in order to keep the integrity of the waistline from being interfered to with this ruching um, over here. But I like the design in principle. I like the one shoulder look. I like the fact that um, it's a little bit on the loose side and then it goes in at the waist and then it's a knee length and it's got some interesting detail. However, the execution of it would need a bit of extra thought. I also really liked this top number 110, which is also the sewing lesson. I like the way it's got like this bib front section, which you can't really see because they've used a, it's a really beautiful fabric. I don't want to put this fabric down, but I feel like they could have done a contrast on the bib just so that you can see that there is a bib pattern piece over here. Otherwise, what is the point? You know, when you're making these things, especially as a publication selling patterns, you really want to showcase those design lines uh, for people to be able to see. So I quite like this, um, especially based on what I've seen there. It is a loose fit garment, which is perfect for summer, especially when it's very hot. And we've been having a lot of hot days here in England. So I'm more inclined to like the things that are great for summer. And then we have another lovely voluminous um, type of, um, I'll call this a sack dress. To me, this is kind of like a sack dress, but it's just got some straps and a little bit of um, detail at the back, which I have to be honest with you personally, if I would sew this, I wouldn't necessarily bother with these uh, fancy looking pleats. I, I kind of feel like this is a, a style where you just let the fabric sing and you don't really need to have any fancy details. I would maybe do the fancy detail if I was just using like a plain uh, beige or a plain black fabric. And I want there to be some technical skill showing through. But otherwise, if I'm just going in it because I've got a fabric that I love the print and I don't want it to be interrupted, I'm not going to bother with this. But I can see this one being quite popular, especially in the regions that experience like strong summers. So I expect this to be quite a popular one. And there's the sewing lesson for this um, top. I actually liked the pattern better as a dress. And I will show you that. Okay, there's that overcardy thingy again. Right, and then we've got this soft tailoring side of things. We've got this blazer, 119. Very smart, um, nice looking color for the fabric. I kind of like the blush pink for it. I'm not at that stage where I need more of these, though, unfortunately. And then we've got another simple, simple top. Literally, this is a, it doesn't have any shaping in it at all, but it's been made fancy by the addition of a lace trim. And I kind of like this. This is a good way of just using up any bits and bobs that you have lying around in your sewing room. And then we have an off-shoulder top with an elasticated um, shoulder catcher thingy. Uh, yeah, I think I'm a little bit um, over this style of tops, kind of, presently. And then we've got a maxi skirt, which is very similar to something that we had two months ago, except for it's just been made maxi. Now, personally, I don't appreciate it when Berda repeat uh, the same pattern from a couple of months ago, simply because... I think that the magazines from a couple of months ago will still be available either on eBay or from booksellers, etc. It's really not necessary to repeat that, especially for those of us who are on subscriptions. If there's a gap of about a year, that's fine. That's acceptable because maybe within that year, somebody hasn't discovered Berda. Somebody has just discovered Berda. But within a few months, I do feel like that is kind of taking the mick. But that's my own personal thing. 
I really liked these trousers because they inspired me to do more piping work because I thought that the piping down the side of these trousers just took it from zero to hero in my opinion. No way would I ever make a pair of white trousers like this and just be sitting lounging around on the ground. My life does not work like that. But I would like this in theory if you had kind of like black and maybe like a pink or a green. I don't know. But I this inspired me to do some piping. And I'll show you the piping that I did with the project from this magazine um, at the end. And then we've got a really simple cute top that I was very tempted by. It's got a yoke that kind of dips in. And then you've got a gathered front. And I just thought that this was adorable. I loved the contrasting uh, fabrics that they use. The sheer lace. And I pinned this one for something that I could make at some point. And this is in the petite sizes. And then we've got that raglan sleeve dress again that was on the cover, but this time it's in a beautiful yellow fabric and it's got a waist belt. This fabric that they have used is a little has got a little bit more structure compared to um, the first one that we saw. The first one that we saw was in a viscose crepe, and so it was a very drapey one. But this one is more in a cottony, a stretch cotton. So it's it's holding the volume. So you can see on the sleeves here yeah, how it's holding the volume, and I love that. I absolutely love that. And I was kind of like, if I could get this fabric, I would make this dress as is. Absolutely do not like the background. I do not understand why they chose to use a beige background on a yellow thing. It This doesn't make it pop at all. Yeah, I just, they lose points for that <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so this dress I was a little bit torn about. I quite like the top half of it. But there was just something about the gathering at the front that I wasn't keen on. But then the more I thought about it, I realized that I just didn't like the fabric. And I got this uh, viscose fabric that I was just like, it would look absolutely banging in this pattern. But without just the gathering on the front panel. And then it's solidified for me. But the thing that I will add when I make it is I'm going to add some belts so that uh, some side seam belts so that I've got the option of cinching it in and adding shaping at the waist. But I feel like in a rayon, this would be a really great summer dress and I would love to lengthen it into a maxi um, kind of dress. But yeah, I was torn until I realized that it was the fabric that wasn't necessarily working for me, but in another fabric that would work. And I would use a contrasting fabric for that bib over here, just so that you can show it off as something that's different. And then we've got that easy pattern again, this time in a tie and dye fabric. We've got that dress um, again, the sack of potatoes dress with some straps on it. This time it's shorter up to the knee length. That's okay. Then there's that skirt, the maxi skirt um, with a side uh, front, with a center front button placket. Mm, just a bit meh about that one, really. Okay, uh, then some knit trousers using a stretch jersey fabric. Really fabulous colors. Absolutely loved it. And also the thing about this photo shoot is they're back in Cape Town. So I've noticed that Berta, they do a lot of photo shoots in Cape Town. And I would recognize those mountains anywhere and so it's pretty awesome because it's just such like a beautiful summery vibe to it which did make me wonder whether they use um, models from Cape Town or whether they fly them in from Germany that would be interesting to find out that behind the scenes stuff but anyway so we're at the sea we're at the beach in Cape Town and this is a really lovely useful sort of pair of trousers I think especially made in a lightweight jersey because it's kind of like jogger pants but not as thick or as heavy as jogger pants so for me jogger pants are perfect for autumn and winter but something lighter like this would be kind of cool as an alternative to leggings in the summer so I was kind of like I like the idea I like the idea okay and some product placement there and then there's this really um I want to say a weird looking top because I don't appreciate the location of these uh, pleats here. It might be the fabric that isn't draping in well and it's holding those folds like this in a very harsh way. But to me, this doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't look comfortable, especially given that it's located on um, a beach. I may, be diff um, I may think differently once I see what people make of this within the bird or sewing community, but I wasn't too impressed with that. Okay, there's that uh, long cardi again, but this time it is in like a denim and we can see from here that it's got some side seam pockets. And I have to say it's a shame that they've gone for side seam pockets because I think it would have looked banging to have giant uh, pockets with flaps to match in with these ones here. 
Um, so when I saw this version, I was like, yeah, I could get down with this. But am I going to get down with it? I don't know. I don't think so. Right. This dress here, this shows us the problem that we have with that ruching um, over there. And that is that if you look on here, you can see how the waistline, which is supposed to go straight across, is being brought down by the sheer weight of the threaded through um, ties. So I was kind of like, you need to do some heavy weight reinforcement on here so that you don't have that, uh, you don't have this dragging the waist down. So that was my biggest problem with that. And I still haven't thought of a way that I'd be able to fix this, which is such a shame, really. Um, but yeah, there you go. You've got that fussy detail that you have at the back of this dress here, which again, is okay if you're using a plain fabric, but I just, if you're letting your fabric sing, I kind of feel like you don't really need all of that stuff. Okay. And then we've got a tutorial on how to dye, to do an ombre dye job on this sweatshirt. We have seen this sweatshirt so many times. It's kind of like one of Berta's favorite active wear patterns, right? And then we've got a advertorial. I knew it. Product placement over there. Okay, and then um, the retro model is this 1950s style dress with a kimono sleeve and gusset detail. And I got to say, I was very tempted by this. I was absolutely tempted because the pattern pieces are very small. You just have got the front and the back. And then you've got this one triangular piece with um, these stripes. I was like, oh my gosh, this would be so amazing. But I think you need the right fabric for it. So you need to have a fabric that's going to hold that incredible flair. And I think this would be like a fantasy make for me. Um, yeah, but I love it. I love that I've got this dress in my co collection and I've pinned it up as, as, as something that I would love to make one day. And then we've got a really great kids section as well because a uh, raglan sleeve with kangaroo pockets and a hoodie, th that is a staple for kids that you just need to have. These ones are going up to a size 116. Sadly, my my twins, my last ones, number four and five, they're a little bit taller than 116, but this is a great, um, it's got some really great staples. And most of the styles are basically unisex because you can still make these shorts for um, for girls and you can still make the, the tops for girls as well. And then we've got some lovely plus sizes, especially the prints. I absolutely love the prints that they used. This is so tropical and so vibrant. And again, it's in the streets of South Africa. Um it's quite simple. You've got the darts, but you've got the little frills um, on the sleeveless top. And I thought that that was quite lovely. And I loved the colors as well. And then you had like a, this, a semi-circle top. Same like a poncho. But taken to another level with this uh, lovely print. We've got a simple dress here with some bust darts. Um, and an opening at the neck. Not a big fan of this particular look personally. I was just like, mm, didn't like that. I thought that this was quite interesting in terms of um, having something simple and easy to make that you could wear on holiday and could also double up as a coverall. Um, you know, a coverall, the thing that you wear over your swimsuit when you're walking around um, at the seaside. I was like, that could be useful and that could be popular within the sewing community. I loved the fabric that they used on these culottes. I was just like, beautiful, beautiful, love it. And I also like the culottes themselves because they've got like these really nice deep pockets, the slanted patch pockets at the front. And I like the length of these culottes and I like the fact that they're quite streamlined. They're not too, because I don't like it personally when culottes go all the way out. I kind of feel like, you know, if it's going to look like a skirt, make it a skirt. <laughs> Okay, a cuff sleeve top. You can never go wrong with a cuffed sleeve. Um, personally, I just think that they add something mm, to most things. And I love adding cuff sleeves to some most of my makes. Oh, this top, mm -mm, the less said about it, the better. Especially that peplum frill down there. It's not doing anything for me. Okay, and then we've got, this is the sewing lesson, and they've got a really good tutorial on how to grade between sizes. So if your bust is a different size to your waist, to your hip, they're showing you how you can actually grade. And this is fine if your sewing pattern is within the same, the sizes are within the same ranges. Because uh, as we know, the plus sizes, they start from either 42 to a 44. Well, if your bust is 38 and then, you know, your 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 hip area is like a 44 it's 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 um it's always be a bit unfortunate to be on those in between sizes 
Um, so I thought that this was a good tutorial for them to add. And then you've got an editorial showing you the things that are there. And this is what we have overall. I thought that this was a great issue. I absolutely loved it. And let me show you what I made. So I started, I traced out straight away um, dress number, what's this one? Dress number 104. And I made it in this, I am making it. Look at me, sounding as if I finished it already when I have it. I've made it in this bird fabric. So this is a Lady Malkaroy. I think it's a Lady Malkaroy stretch cotton fabric. And I decided to do some piping. So I've got some piping around the neckline. And I did the piping around the armholes as well. And it was very tricky. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I'm just trying to get it to focus. And it was really tricky to do the corners here. Because, of course, it's got princess seam lines. And then it's got a cutaway armhole. And I've lined it with this, um, I think it's called Bemberg. Yeah, Bemberg lining. And so... This is where I'm at with it. But for the skirt, as I mentioned before, I didn't like the skirt. So I'm using a skirt from a vintage 1969 uh, Berda. And it's a skirt that will have a box pleat at the front. And it's got some darts for shaping. And that's what we have, guys. So this is what I have started making. So I've traced that one out. I'm definitely going to be making this one. I haven't decided on the fabric yet. I would love to make this as well in a rayon. And I thought that this was um, the shorter version of that one. That's definitely a potential one that I could make. And so, yeah, I thought that this was quite good. I'm very happy with the patterns that came with it. I feel like it's made a great addition to my collection. And I love this. This is kind of like one of those things that is going to be a fantasy make for me at some point in the future. I don't know. Maybe I'll join up with one of those sewing challenges where you get to sew up something um, that you love. So this is it, guys. This is my um, browse through of Berda. Uh, July 2020. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know if there's anything that you absolutely loved in here that you're also going to be making um, along. And um, I'd love for you to point out if there's anything that I've missed out that you think is a diamond in the rough. And I will check it out. I do sometimes get really banging ideas from the comments that you guys leave. And I do read every single comment and I do appreciate them and I get a lot of ideas from them. So let me know in the comments down below. And until I see you next time, guys, I have the sewing. Bye.